Jesus is in this place this morning. Jesus is here this morning. And uh, when he was leading the prayer, says that it's only by the name of Jesus then restoration is possible. If it wasn't by the name of Jesus, we shall just fold our Bibles, take our bags, and go back home. Because in the name of Jesus, the restoration is possible this morning. Because of Jesus, your restoration is possible this morning. Clap your hand for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, Father, all other names fade away. Until it's only you, Jesus, the man of restoration, the one who came, oh, Father, to set us free, the one who came to deliver us, we call upon your name. The Bible says, whoever will call upon the name of Jesus will be saved. Yes, we are calling upon your name. We are just instruments that you're going to use this morning. Father, I want to diminish and you alone, oh Father, take your right place in this, in this time. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, through you, miracles are happening. Through you, healings are happening. Through you, restoration are happening. We call and we invite you in this place. Take your right place. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and open the hearts the heart of your people. Let them, oh Father, be connected to the same Spirit. And let them, oh Father, receive all oh, the anointing that is beyond, oh Father, the word that we have prepared today. The Bible says that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Oh Father, this morning, oh Father, I'm going to diminish. I'm going to disappear. Only you, Jesus, you'll take your place. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus is taking his place. We thank the Holy Spirit for the past week. We have started already our prayer of zero tolerance. It's been a week now. And the whole last week, the Holy Spirit was with us. And the Lord has already started restoration. Amen. I bless the Lord for our spiritual father, Papa Antoine. If we see us standing, he's the one who's always coaching us. It's not by might, it's not by power. It's because always he receives revelation and he will call you and coach you. May the Lord bless you. Amen. We are going to start our service today. Uh, we're still in the topic of restoration. Uh, we have started already with the powerful woman of God. She gave us uh, the topic uh, of restoration. May the Lord bless you. This service, I didn't prepare it myself. I was with my husband, the man of God. is the one who actually gave me a lot of things to say today. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We are still in the topic of restoration, and indeed, Jesus is going to restore us. Amen. I like the definition that the woman of God gave us on Sunday. She says that restoration is to receive back more than what has been lost, to the extent that the final state is greater than the original condition. Amen. The restoration is to receive back. Amen. The restoration means again to return it, it to its original condition. It means also to bring back. The Bible says that when the Lord bring back the captive of Zion, who were like people who were dreaming, amen. Someone is going to be like dreaming, but it's, going not, it's not going to be a dream, but it's going to be reality, amen. Restoration is to recover, hallelujah. Someone during those two weeks, you're going to recover, not partially, you're going to recover all in the name of Jesus. Restoration means to put back, to put back in order. Amen. Locusts came to 
mess up your life. Locusts came to destroy your life. But when the Lord says that I will restore, it means that I will put everything back in order. Amen. Restoration says that to adjust back together. You know when the locusts come, they like scattered you, scattered you, scattered you. But when say, the Lord says that I will restore, the Lord actually is meaning I will adjust back together. Amen. See what happens when God restores the life of somebody. When the Lord restores your life, God does not take you back to the way you were before you experienced being destroyed. The Bible says that, is there anyone who saw the temple? Is there anyone in the book of Agai? Is there anyone who saw the temple on how the temple was? And the Lord says that the glory of the latter temple will be greater than the former. Amen. It means that if the latter temple was built in, in, in gold, the one that the Lord is going to restore is going to be built in diamond. You know, diamond is more expensive than gold. Amen. Look the life of Mephibosheth. When the Lord restore his life, it comes from Lodeba. And I explained to you that Lodeba was the place where there is no communication, place where there is no pasture. And it restored the Lord, restored back everything that he has lost. And on top, the Lord multiplied him. Amen. This is what is going to happen into your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, today we're going to see, last week we saw a lot of things about restoration. The woman of God spoke about the type of restoration. The woman of God spoke about the seven, seven keys, if we can call them. The seven things that we can see that we have been restored. And during the week, we pray about it. But today, the Lord is taking us in another dimension. Today, we're going to see three keys to restoration. Tell your neighbor, three keys to restoration. The first one, we just say a conducive environment. Can you write it down? A conducive environment. The second one, the promises associated to a covenant. The promises associated to a covenant. That's the second key. The third key, the works of the cross. The third key is the works of the cross. And between brackets, we say that the works of the cross is possible through the death and resurrection of Christ. Amen. Uh, Papa Shelko, may the Lord bless you. When we're saying it's only Jesus we can restore. Actually, we are saying that it's only the works of the cross can restore your life. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor you're going to be restored to this morning. So the Lord decided to restore somebody in the Bible. I want us to read in the book of Genesis, chapter 11. I will just read. It's a long uh, readings. But when I just say a name of a person, you underline the name and you underline the ages. Amen. Genesis 11. Verse uh, from verse 10. The Bible says that this is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old. When I say Shem, you underline Shem. When I mention the, the years, you underline the year, you're going to understand. Sometimes when you read, someone starts reading the genealogies, people become bored. Amen. Through that genealogy, the Holy Spirit can give you a great revelation. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old, and he begot Arpazest two years after the flood. After he begot after Zex, Shem lives 500 years and begot sons and daughters. 12. Arpazex lived 35 years and begot Salam. I will jump to, to, to 13. Salam lived 30 years and begot Eber. 
16. Eba lived 34 years and begot Peleg. 18. Peleg lived 30 years and begot Reu. 20. Reu lived 32 years and begot Seruk. 22. Seruk lived 30 years and begot Nahor. Nahor lived 29 years and begot Terah. Now, Terah lived 70 years and begot Abram. Amen. You see, this is the genealogy of Shem. Shem begot, 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 begot. And when you see Shem begot the first child when he was 100 years old. All those followers, they were 30, 35, 20, 35, amen. But one who came in verse 26, the Bible says, Now Terah lived 70 years and begot Abraham. Amen. Already there is a problem. Already there is a problem. You can feel that there is a problem. Everybody comes 30 years, children. 21, children. But Terah comes 70 years old. Amen. Let's now see what happened in his, in his descendant. The Bible says, verse 27, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Aran. Aran begot Lot, and Aran died, for, Aran died before his father. Terah in his native land, in Ho of the Chaldean. Then Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milka, the daughter of Aaron, the father of Milka, and the father of Iska. But first it was now, now it's but. But Sarai was barren, she had no children. Hallelujah. The problem have started. Terah begotten at 70. In his genealogy, Abraham begot a, 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 a Mary a woman, and the Bible says that that woman was barren. The problem has started. You know that just by reading the genealogy, the, the Holy Spirit can open your mind and start teaching you. Already, you think in your mind that this, with this man, there is a problem. Amen. But I like what the Lord started with the life of Abraham. From nowhere, the Bible did not say that Abraham was a prayerful man. The Bible did not say that Abraham fasted a lot. Then suddenly in chapter 12, the Lord came and called him. Amen. Oh, in this matter of restoration, it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what was your past. It doesn't matter what you did 10 years back. What matters is the election of grace. So suddenly there was an election of grace. And someone just came. The Bible says, now the Lord has said to Abraham. Not because Abraham was fasting. In 11, they did not say that Abraham was a prayerful man. Abraham was fasting a lot. But it was an election of grace. Don't look at your what happened in your family. Don't look at on your past, past, but look at of the election of grace. The Bible says, get out of your country. Just from nowhere, the grace locates him. Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. Let me just go back a little bit. You know that the Bible says that Terah took Abraham, Lot and the other, the, the other child, they, was go, they were going to Canaan. But I don't know what happened in the middle of the, 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 the way. They were going to Canaan, and we know that Canaan is the, 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 the promised land, the land that there is honey and milk. So he was going to Canaan, but I don't know what happened in verse uh, uh, chapter 11, verse... 32, from 20, 31 to 32. The Bible says, And Terah took his son Abram, and his grandson Lot, the son of Aaron, and his daughters-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, 
and they were out with them from Ur of the Chaldean to go to the land of Canaan. From Ur, they were going to the land of Canaan. And they come to Aran and dwell there. Amen. I was checking the map. I was checking the map yesterday and see where is where is who was who was situated. Who was like on the, the, the left -hand side. And Aran was like in the north. And when you come a little bit on the east was Canaan. So in his way. In his way, he was going to Canaan. But I don't know what happened. But we will understand what happened in his way. So instead of going to Canaan, he just stopped in Aran. Amen. You can go back and check the map. So the Lord says to Abraham, leave your country. Leave your family and leave your father's house. Amen. Terah was the father of Abraham. I'm saying Abraham, it's because the Lord was not yet changing his, his name to become Abraham. He was Ab Abraham. So Terah was the father of Abraham. And Terah represented the, 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 the father, represented the elder in the family. And through him, Abraham and Lord and the entire family were supposed to receive inheritance. But what exactly mean terror? Terror that you see was having a terrible meaning. Terror means wanderer. Terror means a nomad. Terror means one who is banished. You know when we are watching movies, especially Nigerian movies, when they say that that person is banished, You'll see that the, yeah, the youth, they will come and take, pack all his things and throw him out of the city. Amen. So Terah, by his name, it was someone who was banished. It was a nomad. What, who is a nomad? Or oh, what was the life of nomad people? So those people, they were not settling in a one place. It means that, Mama Mukab, if today in Makoko there is green pasture, you go to Makoko. If they say the green pasture is in Denville, you know, to, you go to Denville. If they say go to Ramatabama, you go to Rabatam. That was his life. And the Lord cannot restore someone who is having a, a life of nomads. The Lord wants you to be settled. The more you are settled, the more your restoration is coming. And someone was telling me, you cannot settle. The settlement it also means spiritually. You cannot be settled spiritually if today you are eating in Denville, tomorrow you are eating in Ramatabama, tomorrow you are having Andre's spiritual father. How are you going to be settled? When the Lord comes now, this is the time to restore you. You are already in Ramatabama. How is God is going to restore you? When God is waiting for you in town. Amen. So Terah, that was, mean, what the, was the meaning of his name. So the reason why God says to Abraham, we always read, go out of your country, go out of your family, go out of their father's house. You're going to understand why the country. The country because the name of Terah was, was, uh, Terah was the nomad. It means that someone who's not settling, someone who's traveling, the Bible says that it's a traveler. So today is in this place, tomorrow is in this place. It means that a person who travels around rather than sitting in one place. It also means that a person who travels aimlessly, not without any purpose, you just travel. God wants to restore Abraham, but God could not restore Abraham in the country of his father. Why? Because the father was not having a place. The father was, was not having a place to settle. This is the reason why God said, out of the country. Amen. You know, there is some people, since you separate yourself with some people, you see that your life is going forward. So this morning, the Lord said, come out of your country. Amen. So terror means again, The Lord now said to Abraham, leave your family. Why leaving the family? Terah means wretch. 
write it R W R E T C H. It means in a very unhappy or unfortunate state. Miserable. Amen. So the Lord was actually telling Abraham, there is a grace that is coming upon you. There is a favor that is coming upon you. But I cannot bless you in that kind of family. A family where there is in a very unhappy or unfortunate state. Amen. A miserable name. Hallelujah. So the Lord is going to restore you. I'm not going to say that leave your family. These things are spiritually. The Lord is going to remove you from that unhappy or unfortunate and unfortunate state, a miserable state, so that he can come and restore you. Amen. Terror also means delay. For the restoration to take place, God needed to leave, to make Abraham to leave the family. That is a characterized by the delay. So if in your family there is a delay, God will remove you from that situation of delay. Then he's going to restore you in the name of Jesus. So the Lord continued to say, leave now the house of your father. What was the house of the father, uh, the house of your father? The Bible says that in the book of Joshua 24, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says that uh, Terah, you can read it, Joshua chapter 24, Joshua 24. Papa Israel, can you read for the glory of the Lord? Joshua 24. I would like us to read it so that we can understand. Joshua 24, verse 1 and 2. Joshua chapter 24, verse 1. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to search him and called for the elders of Israel, for their heads, for their judges, for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. Yes, continue. And Joshua said to all the people, mm. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, your fathers including terror. Your fathers including? Including terror. Mm. The father of Abraham. And the father of Nahor dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other gods. And they served other gods. I think it's NLT, who another version says that they were idol worshippers. So the Lord wants to settle you, and the Lord wants to restore you, but the Lord cannot restore you in, in an environment that is not conducive. That's why we say a conducive environment. A conducive environment is an environment where things are likely to be happen. Things that, uh, where restoration is, 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 is likely to be happen, it's where the Lord wants you to be. The Lord says that leave the house of the Father. Why? Because Tara was an idol worshiper. Tara was not worshiping God. This is the reason why God wants Abraham to leave the country, to leave the family, to leave the house of his father so that restoration can come his way. Amen. And the woman of God says that there is no restoration without repentance. The Lord wants you to come out of your family. Actually, the Lord wants to remove that unfortunate situation that you are living in your family. The Lord wants you to give you a place where you're going to settle. When you are settled, now the Lord can come and restore you. Amen. Am I talking to someone? Am I talking to someone? Amen. And Abraham's restoration was supposed to take place in a Canaan, the country of honey and milk, the land of abundance. But I don't know. You know that the reason why the delay of terror is leaving Ur going to Canaan, but he, 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 he learned in Aran. Why? Because there was a delay. So the delay delayed him to go and enjoy the land that flows honey and milk. Amen. We are going to take the second point. We'll talk about the promises associated to a covenant. Hallelujah. 
again an election of grace come. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse, from verse 1, I'm going to read. Genesis 17, from verse 1. The Bible says, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am, I, I am almighty God. In other version, they says, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. When the Lord called him for the first time, the Lord didn't look at his background. The Lord didn't look at his spiritual life. But now, the Lord gave him instruction. Walk before me blameless. I will make my covenant with you. Amen. And the Bible continues and say, I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and I will be, my covenant is with you, and I shall be, a, and you shall be a father of many nations. You know, when the Lord was talking to him, he was not having a child. Isaac was not yet there. Then the Lord continued and said, No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nation of you. I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generation for an everlasting covenant. I would like you to underline this one. He says that I will make a covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for, a, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendant after you. Also, I will give to you, to your descendant after you, the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, I will be their God. And God says to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant. Can someone underline? You shall keep my covenant throughout their generation. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendant after you. Amen. What is a covenant? A covenant in the Bible, it is an agreement. An agreement between God and his people in which God promises to protect them if they keep his law and were faithful. So God came to, to Abraham, says that, I will make a covenant but you must be blameless and you must work upright before me. And the Lord says that I will bless you. I will multiply you. So even the generations that are coming, I will keep that covenant. Amen. And the Bible says in the book of Joel, the Lord says that I will restore back to you. The reason why the people of Israel were restored, it was because of the covenant. The covenant that not that them made with God, but the covenant that God made with Abraham. Because through Abraham, all those descendants, were those who went in captivity, comes from Abraham. Because the Bible says that I will multiply you. I will make you fruitful. Amen. So, the one who paid the price is was Abraham. The one who made the covenant with God was Abraham. But because of the covenant that he makes with God, the entire generation were also ben benefit to that covenant. It means that if in the family there is someone who was serving the Lord, your grandfather or your grandmother was serving the Lord, and I remember... Mama Bear was doing a deliverance of someone. So a voice starts talking 
from a father's side or from a mother's side, the spirit says that as we're serving God, this is the good part that we are protecting her. But the other side, the other families, they were serving idol worshippers. So it was like one side they were protecting her, but another side they were serving idols, they were claiming a life. It means that if there is a covenant that was made with your father or your grandfather who was worshipping God, it means that you can also benefit of that covenant. Amen. This is the reason why you see there is people in their families, they marry without problem. They are getting job without problem. Everything is just smooth. Why? Because there was a covenant. There is someone who paid the price. And their, their own lineage, their own generation, just a receiver, the benefit of that covenant. Let me tell you, in the other side, if there is a covenant that was made with the darkness, it means that the entire generation will follow or will leave the consequence of that covenant. It means that if they say that we sacrifice all the, child, the male child, it means that all the male child will be useless. If they say we sacrifice all the female child, they won't get married. Nothing is going to happen in their life. It means that those things are going to happen because of the covenant. Amen. Look at the covenant that God made with Abraham. Isaac did not pay Lobola. So Isaac did not go and look for a wife. Abraham sent Eliezer of Damascus, and Eliezer went, choose the wife for her, for, for him, pay Lobola. Why? Because it was already in the covenant. So in the covenant, even the choice, those who are having a covenant of God, even the choice that they are making, it means that the Holy Spirit is always with them and direct them. So Isaac didn't need to go, but because the Holy Spirit, through the covenant, he went and he chose the right wife. Hallelujah. So tonight, or today, and the weeks that will going to come, oh, all evil covenants in our families, they will be broken in the name of Jesus. They will be broken in the name of Jesus. And we're going to make a covenant with God. The child cannot benefit of the covenant of the father. It directly. But the promises, because the one who made the covenant is the father. But this covenant comes with a promises. I will make a covenant with you. Your descendants, they will be also under this covenant. Because I will multiply you. Them also, they will be multiplied. Amen. When there is a covenant that is made, there is things that is changing the spiritual realm. There is things that is going to be changed. We will reverse the covenant that our fathers, our forefathers made and will build the covenant of God. Amen. And you know, there is no covenant without an altar. Altars come again. There is no covenant without an altar. Amen. We're going to read and we're going to understand. The Bible says that Abraham, when he meets with God, and the Bible says that he built an altar on that place and called that place Bethel. Amen. Now let us read Genesis 20, 28 and see what happened. After Isaac, it was now the generation of, uh, of, of, of Jacob. Let's read and see what happened. Genesis 28 from verse 10. The Bible says, Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Aran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night. Because the sun had set, and he took one of the stone, can someone underline stone, of the place and put at his head, and he lay down. And the place, he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, someone said, then he dreamed. And behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and, it, and its top reached to heaven. And the and there the angel of God were as ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, Hallelujah. I am the God of Abraham, your father. I am the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. 
The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendant. Also your descendant shall be as dust as the herb. That was the promise into Abraham. Your descendants shall, shall be as dust of the earth. You shall spread out abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And in you and in your seeds, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Can you underline all the family of the, 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 the earth shall be blessed? Behold, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go. The same promises that God gave to Abraham. And will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. Someone say, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none of other other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Hallelujah. Underline the gate of heaven. So, Abraham, actually when he was going, he did a lot of schemes at the back. He, 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 he stole the birthright of his brother. Actually when he was going, he was running. Then, someone who was a scammer, someone who was a thief, suddenly he went to a place. And then the Bible says that he took a stone and used that stone as a pillow. Normally when you sleep on a stone, you are not going to get sleep. We go to sleep when you put a smooth pillow. You put your head, then you sleep. But him, a scammer, a thief, he sleep on the pillow and he receive revelation. Hallelujah. The stone represents Jesus. So why did he meet Jesus in his, in his way? Why did he meet Jesus? He met Jesus because the place that he was sleeping, he did not know that was the same place where his father, his grandfather Abraham, make an altar. So he did not know. He said that surely this place is the house of God. He did not know that that place, Abraham, his father, put an altar. So because of the altar, he received the same there's the same promises that was linked to the covenant. That's why we say that if there is evil altar, you will receive the consequences of those evil altar. If there is an altar of blessings, like Abraham, a scammer, a thief, he took a stone. He met Jesus. Who told him to, to, to take a stone? He took a stone. He slept on it. And the Bible says that the heaven was open. The Bible says the heaven was open. You know why? There is three times in the Bible where heavens open. And when heaven opens, there is things that is happening. The Bible says that uh, Jesus was baptized. When they put him in the water, the Bible says that the, op the heaven was open. And when the heaven was open, the Lord, there was a voice coming and say, this is my, my son. Actually, God was saying, this is the sacrifice on the altar. This is the sacrifice on the altar. When you took Jesus as a pillow, you'll be saved and you'll be restored. There was another time in the Bible when the heaven was open. The Bible says, in the book of Malachi, Come in my house with your offering, with your tithe. What is a tithe? A tithe is the ten, the, 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 the ten of your, your, your revenue. Anything, it may be in your field. It may be of your salary. You know when you have that tithe, you remove that ten percent. There is a pain in you. Do you feel pain? 
Maybe you did not yet pay the rent. Maybe when you pay your tithe, you won't even remain with something in your, your, your bank account. But it was a sacrifice. When you give that sacrifice on an altar, an altar, like Jacob says that this is the house of God. Actually, there was not a building like this. It was just an altar, a spiritual altar that said that this is the house of God. If you come with your tithe, you come with your offering upon the altar, the, 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 the heaven is going to be open. And the Lord says that for you, this mean that way, you will see if I'm not going to open the floodgate of heaven. Hallelujah. The third time when the Bible spoke about the heaven to open, it's when Abraham received the revelation, the angel ascending, ascending, and descending. Hallelujah. Who was a schemer? He received the revelation because of the altar. Hallelujah. You have to build an altar in your family. You have to build an altar. And that altar will allow the heaven to open. The Bible says, this is my son. Follow him. This is the sacrifice that will give you restoration. This is the sacrifice that will make your sin to be forgiven. This is the sacrifice. Actually, the stone was Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jacob said, I did not know. Why he did not know? He was a schemer. He was a thief. But because of the altar of his, his, his father, he benefited of the same. And you know, the Holy Spirit was just teaching me when I was worshiping there. You know, Jesus, the sacrifice, was supposed to come from Abraham. Because it was, it was supposed to come from Jacob. Because it was through Jacob, through the 12 tribe of Judah, that Jesus came. It means that that day, the Lord did not look at his scheme in the past. The Lord did not look on his background. But the Lord says, because of the covenant and because of the altar you are receiving, you will be fruitful. Because through you, Judah will come. And through Judah, Jesus will come. The one who will come to save the whole world. That's why we say, without Jesus, there is no restoration. Oh, can you clap your hand for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. What are now the benefits of the covenant? I've already spoken about it. The benefit of the covenant, restoration of all that the enemies have stolen will come back to you. God opened the windows of heaven. And there is things that happen when the windows of heaven are open. I already mentioned it. God come and confirm his sonship. Saying that Matthew 3 verse 16 to 17. This is my beloved son. This is the sacrifice on the altar. Whoever will follow him. Whoever will be meeting him. Will receive salvation. God released blessings. Malachi chapter 4 verse 10 to 12 the Lord says that bring your offering bring your tithe have the habit to bring your offering in the house of God have the habit to bring your offering your tithe in the house of God you are putting it on the altar and when the fire will come smoke will go to heaven and you will receive blessings and blessing in abundance Oh, when the heaven is open, the mystery of Bethel, that says that you'll be fruitful. And then, through you, Judah will come. What is the benefit? Policies, rules, regulation, laws change to your advantage. You remember the, the story of Esther. Esther 5, verse 8. Esther could not go in the presence of the king without being summoned. But because of the covenant, Esther was from the same people that the Lord says that I will restore unto you. Amen. The people who are benefiting of the covenant. So rules, regulations, laws were changed in a advantage. Hallelujah. When, oh Father, thank you Jesus. When, the, one of the benefits, it's a multiplication and increase. You'll see multiplication you will see increase.
The covenant bring the favor of God. Hallelujah. This one, I like it too much. You know when the people of God were going out of Egypt, the Lord says, I will give to them favor among their neighbors. They will give them things. They will give them material. They will give them goods so that they can go and worship their God. Amen. You know those people did not deny it. When I go to my neighbor, give me, they gave. Go to my neighbor, give. That is the, the covenant because these people were in a covenant with God. It means that when you are in a covenant with God, favor is your wage. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we spoke about when there is a favor again, God opened the book of remembrance. We remember in the book of, of uh, Daniel 7, verse 9, verse 21 to 22 and verse 26. The Bible says that the court must be seated. When you are in a covenant of God, you are not fighting your battle. It's God himself who is going to fight for you. The books of remembrance must be open and the court must be seated and the judgment will be made in your favor. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, the third key, ha, alala, the third key of restoration is the works of the cross. We say that there is no restoration without the works of the cross. When on that altar the, the heaven opened, when they put him in the water, the Bible says that this is a, 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 a sacrifice. Because on the altar, we put sacrifice. On the altar, we put sacrifice. And sacrifice was the life of Jesus for you and I to be restored. Hallelujah. In Old Testament, there is people who receive restoration. Moses, in the book of Exodus 15, you can go and read it at home. Exodus 15, verse 22 to 25. The people of Israel, where they were in a desert, they were asking, they were thirsty, and they wanted to have water. But they, they reached a place, there was water, but that water was bitter. Amen. And they start murmuring. The Bible says that Moses called unto the Lord, and the Lord told him, the water was bitter, they could not drink that water. The Lord says, take a tree and put, God give him a specific tree. If there were 10 trees, God give him a specific tree. Take that tree and put it in the water. The Bible says that when he took the tree, put in the water, the water becomes sweet, and they drank on that water. Amen. What represents a tree? A tree represents the cross. A tree is having the same, the same material as a wood where Jesus was crucified. That miracle could not happen if it wasn't by the miracle of Jesus. If it wasn't by the power of the Holy Spirit. If there is no power of the Holy Spirit, you'll take a tree, put it in the water, and the water is not going to change. But it took a specific tree that represented the cross. This is the reason why I say there is no restoration without the works of the cross. There was another person in the Bible, not the same people of Israel. They were, they were thirsty again. They start murmuring, ready to stone Moses. And Moses cried unto the Lord once more. Exodus 17, verse 1 and 6. The Lord says, Took, there is a rock somewhere. Go and open that rock, and the people will drink. Hallelujah. So the rock again is Jesus. The Bible called him the chief cornerstone. The Bible calls him Jesus, the rock of ages. So he go to the rock of ages. It's only the rock of ages. It's only the chief cornerstone who can give you water for restoration. And the Bible says that they drink and they were satisfied. Hallelujah. In Old Testament again, when you see the, the, the story of Samson, the Bible says Samson was tired and weary. God sent water gushes from a rock. Hallelujah. Judges 15 verse 19. 
Other version says that water comes from the jaw. Other version says that the Lord opened the aloe. Hallelujah. Remember, what is a jaw? What is a jaw? The jaw represents, the jaw is in the mouth. Hallelujah. So you cannot restore, you cannot be restored if you are not speaking. This is the reason why the Lord says, I have put a word in you. And in such wisdom, no, no, none of your adversary can stand before you. Other people say that, other version says that he opened an aloe, an open place, and the water comes. But uh, uh, I think it's a French version and contemporary uh, version says that the rock. It was again Jesus the rock. And the Bible says that after Samson, it was after defeating the Philistine. He was thirsty. He was weary. He was tired. He says, God, can I, after this, uh, this uh, restoration, are you allow me to die with thirsty? The Lord says, go. There is a rock somewhere. Strike the rock. The water will come. And the Bible says that we say restoration, it will return back. The, the Bible says when he drink, the spirit was revived. When he drink, the spirit was returned back. Hallelujah. So tonight there is a rock that is going to be struck for you to drink and for you to receive revelation in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. It's not only in the, 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 the Old Testament. Even in the New Testament, Jesus died on the cross so that we, may, we, we have been made right with God. Can you read Ephesians chapter 2? We are landing and we are going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Can you read Ephes, Ephesians chapter 2? You can read, Papa, Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Oh, Jesus, the Lamb of God. You are supposed to go on that, on that cross for you and I to be restored. Can you read, Papa, from 1, verse 1 to 10? Ephesians Thank you, Jesus. Two, yes. Verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead in trespasses and sins. Continue. In, he, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Yes. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedient. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Yes. But God, who is rich in mercy, but God who is rich in mercy, continue. Because of his great love with which he loved us. Yes, because of his love, the restoration is possible. Continue. Even when we were dead in trespasses. Even when we were dead in trespasses. Made us alive together with Christ. Oh, Jesus, through the sacrifice of the cross, he made us alive. Hallelujah. By grace, you have been saved. By grace, we have been saved. It was the election of grace that Abraham was chosen. And raised us up together. And raised us up together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in mm. Christ Jesus. Yes. That in the ages to come he might show the ex exceeding riches and his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Hallelujah. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. Hallelujah. You can even stop there. So through the works of the cross, Jesus, by dying on that cross, we have made right with God. Hallelujah. Through that works of the cross, we claim our inheritance. Through that works of the cross, our sins have been forgiven. Through that works of the cross, we receive salvation. Through the same works of the cross, 
The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians, you can read it at home, verse 5, 17 to 21. We become new creature. It means that all things has passed away and all things has become new. God reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. That's why Papa Shelko was reading. He says that Jesus, he was, he was despised by men. People could not even look at him. And people, he was not having, the Bible says he was not having any beauty. But it's that man who went to that cross. It's that man who paid the price for you. Oh, this morning, there is a grace for you to be restored in the name of Jesus. This morning, there is an election of grace for you to be restored in, in the name of Jesus. This morning, there is a rock that is going to be struck for you to receive water, for you to be restored in the name of Jesus. This morning, I would like you to stand already on your feet. I would like you to start praying. It's only about Jesus. It's Jesus who can restore you. It's Jesus who can destroy the altar, the covenant of the darkness. It's only Jesus who can restore you. I would like you to start saying thank you to the Lord. Say thank you to the Lord for his words. Say thank you to the Lord for the revelation. Say thank you to the Lord because your life is going to be restored. Say thank you to the Lord because there is a manifestation of the Spirit tonight, this morning. Say thank you to the Lord. Oh, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and say thank you. Lift up your voice and start saying thank you. Lift up your voice and start saying thank you. Lift up your voice and say thank you. Lift up your voice and say thank you. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. I would like you to say thank you to the Lord. I would like you to say thank you to the Lord. I would like you to say thank you to the Lord. Say thank you to the Lord for the revelation that you received this morning. Say thank you to the Lord for the works of the cross. Without the works of the cross, restoration is not possible. Yes, Jesus. Say thank you to the Lord. Say thank you to the Holy Spirit. Say thank you to the Holy Spirit. Say thank you to the Lord. Hallelujah. Say thank you to the Lord. Say thank you to the Lord. Jesus, the name of God. Jesus. 